goodbye, John. A hundred percent. Take the Take the video. Instagram viral. So then, how long are your videos? How many seconds? Minute. I don't go over a minute. You know, he, he, it can be hard to find music that goes over a minute anyway. And sometimes the music you want to use doesn't go past 30 seconds. So I'll try to keep it to either 15, 30 or a minute. Stop looking at me. What? <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm really inspired by people. Like, for instance, you should go on to, when you want to get started, go on to TikTok and look at some people in different industries and what they're doing and how their videos are doing, how they're doing it. I was really inspired, I hate to say this, but by Rachel Ray, who had a 15 second, she had, yeah, she had a 15 second video on how to chop an onion. And I watched that video like 10 times. I still can't figure out how she's chopping this onion. But it had like 6 million views. Yeah. And you realize that like, you're like a million six. of them. Right. <laughs> I was like at least 10. Like, and, but it's basic. But that, basic, right? that kind of thing that you're saying right there, the chopping of onion. So when we were talking about like, oh, food's so big, but design is so small. Though for me, I'm like, oh my God, everybody knows how to cut an onion. I'm not going to do a video on how to cut an onion. Duh. Those same things exist for design. Right. Every You are an expert. Whatever your job is, you are an expert. And you take for granted the years and years of learning that you have put into your craft. That's all information that I haven't been learning. Like, I don't know how to clean my dishwasher. Never done it before. We don't either. We but clean clean subcontract that do. out. Cleaning experts do know how to clean. That's why I follow cleaning experts. Because I need to learn from them. So every we all have those things that we can make a 15 second video out of that's an aha moment for people. If they don't like it, so if they're like, oh, stupid cutting an onion, they just scroll past it. And then they forget that you made it. Because no one cares. So I was but, thinking like if I were a bathroom designer, for example, yeah. you're like, Let's do, do a 15 second video on three ways to do basic white subway tile, three different ways, right? Mm -hmm. Lay it out three different patterns, boom, you know, 15 seconds. People might, you know, they're going to get way more out of that than you might think. Or the art of the bath, so you're setting positive, like spreading positivity around it. So you're like, oh guys, I design bathrooms, but I love it because it's our relaxation. Here are my three relaxation tips today. Or this is a great, these are great tiles or what, I don't know. We're like a freestanding tub and Xanax is your answer. <laughs> <laughs> so John, I put up your videos up here. Oh I God. No, it's great. I love it. You guys are, I've talked to, about what's good for you, the length of videos, what you use to edit, the truth nuggets you throw in. Yeah, also too, I want to say this. You can see I have, whatever, 20 some odd thousand followers. You don't have to have 300,000, 100,000. It's wonderful if you do, but you really don't to have success with your social 200's media. awesome. Exactly. You really just start and get it out there and keep it consistent. So I just want to say that you don't have to aspire to this higher level of social media that you see happening sometimes. Because I get plenty of, I make plenty of money from my Instagram, I'll <laughs> just say that, and I love it. Um, that being said, I use um, a thing called Splice, which is great little video editing I software. Use Splice. Yeah, it's so fast and easy for me when I do something for my stories. Mm -hmm. And then I use Canva a lot as well for if I partner with a brand and I want a really consistent look throughout the entire story, I'll um, develop that inside of Canva, and then you can please plan it you can get the scheduling done are you a planner well i'm really not but i just did a video series and a whole photo series on my new home renovation that i did and it's 27 days of john which is way too much for anybody but um i pre-planned all that stuff out and every day i wake up and i'm like oh wow that's a really good post i did wow <laughs> that's amazing but i did it all at one time it took like i don't know eight or ten hours to sit down and go through all of that, but once it's done, it's done. And I know that the hashtags are there, the tags are there, the brands are represented. And so Canva is a, is a good thing if you want to appear a bit more professional in your stories. And uh, I don't use it for posts, by the way. I do not use it for posts. Posts are either my professional videos or my professionally um, shot rooms. Only professionally shot for the most part, 99%. Your websites need those professional shots, but sometimes I think it's just grabbing your phone. They make movies on iPhones now. So I think, like, it's called, in TV, it's called shooting B-roll. So you shoot B-roll with your camera. You can do it with your phone. Know where it's going to land. So on TikTok, you're going to shoot it vertical. On other platforms, you can do more horizontal, get wider of it. 
but my thing is this is just start taking videos mm -hmm. then you can figure out what you're going to do with it later but you have content forever and don't you guys love you mentioned this earlier of like show the mess ups show all of that because that's what's going to buy like clients to you because they're going to know you'll know how to handle a situation should something arise because it's not about just the number of followers it's about those followers who are engaged totally. right so if you can have a bunch of followers but if nobody ever comments and if nobody if you have an action point for them and they don't do that action or if you don't comment back that's oh. a pet peeve of mine when people don't comment ever back. come back if someone back. takes the time to to write a message on my post, by golly, I'm gonna say at least a thank you. Or, or just a heart. Yeah, something, my, right? But that, um, making sure that you, I don't know where else I'm Sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, it's okay. I was trying to tag on to that, but See, I totally- See, you're keeping it real for me. <laughs> no, I literally have no idea what I was talking about. I'm so about. sorry. <laughs> oh, we love it. But I wanna talk about other platforms. So we've talked TikTok, Instagram, but Pinterest. So like every designer, has been given Pinterest boards by clients or house. At one point I tell them you must back away from Pinterest, put your blinders on, we are in project, we are not looking at Pinterest anymore. <laughs> but what are your thoughts? Are you back on it? Are you using it? Do you hate it? John, I'm just kidding. What do you think, Sarah? <laughs> no, I, I just wanted to mention Pinterest because I was, I was really slow to get on Pinterest and I've been being told for a couple of years and people are like, you are really neglecting this. So finally during the uh, the lockdown, I sat down and, and posted a lot and you know, researched hashtags, got on Pinterest. And again, it's like any other social media, like some things just take off and most things just don't, like they just hit the ground with a thud, you know, and you can expect that. But um, my best performing post on um, Pinterest is a TikTok. So I took my TikToks, I moved it over to Pinterest, and it's without the logo. Thriving. So yeah, no, with the logo. No, you're right. It may have been without the. It might have been without. The, I think it was without the logo. I have to look. Mm -hmm. um, but and without music, so it has been driving. So it went from like a million a month of views because I've had a couple other things that do well to eight million views a month. And almost all of it, one post. So, and then those people are coming over to my website, and they are buying things. You know, so it's real. So you want that, you want your reels, and you want your TikToks to then, you know, translate over to something that's meaningful, informational um, for your Pinterest account. To get very specific, though, when you are moving something from Instagram or Facebook to Pinterest, the word count. Is very is different for Pinterest than it is for the other social media platforms. So if you're very verbose, like I am, and you type a lot of words on Instagram, those won't transfer over automatically to Pinterest if you're using a sharing platform. So you're going to need to edit that down. But to your point earlier, Jennifer, that's where I go in and I'm thinking about who's my audience because I do have different audiences for Facebook, Instagram, and um, Pinterest, and I really try to think about who I'm speaking to there. I don't visualize my best friend when I'm speaking on Facebook. It's this 65-year-old lady that I remember I went to church with in Georgia. That's who I'm speaking to. And she's great. <laughs> and she loves it. So then, okay, let's talk about hashtags. Because I think sometimes it's like blind hashtagging of like, do I put home? Do I put design? What are your thoughts? What do you do? Do you put too many? Can you put too many? Talk hashtags. Oh, hashtags. I don't know. I don't really or know. Cross that. tagging. You can also discuss cross tagging. So I think the one great thing to do is if you're going to put a hashtag, try to imagine if somebody would follow that hashtag. Mm -hmm. Like, is somebody really following the hashtag mashed potatoes? No, probably not. I mean, maybe they are. No. But for the most part, yeah, exactly. You're not following milkshake because why would you be following that hashtag, right? But people do follow hashtag vegetarian food for me. They do follow hashtag easy recipes. So I try to, if I'm going to use a hashtag, use it in a way that will pop up for those people who might be following that hashtag, not just because a bunch of other people have been like, hashtag, I can't get over my ex. I don't know, right? <laughs> I haven't used that one for a while. But <laughs> 
I, with my hashtags, I'm very specific. So don't choose a hash. I use them all. I use every single number that Instagram will allow to get 30, I believe. You use 30? Every freaking one. Yeah. Um, I use five. No, <laughs> every one. They say you should use 30. I, I like researched this like a month ago. And so Instagram told everyone, they made an announcement that you should only use five and it's optimal to use five. That's what I do. But later came out and did like some research on like 18 million posts. Mashed together. potatoes was and number what, one. And mashed potatoes was number one. <laughs> but they, they basically came out and said, no, you should use the mask. So don't time. copy and paste the same ones. Oh, don't just keep them in the notes on your phone. Really ship them around because if interior design, that has like millions of people that follow that hashtag, I'm probably not going to necessarily be seen. But if I do like Los Angeles interior designer or blue kitchen cabinets, that's what's going to get that seen. So as you're going through and doing your hashtags, look at to see it because it'll tell you how many people are actually um, following that hashtag. And I try to stay in that 100,000, 150,000 range, something like that. Mm -hmm. You can see how many people have used that hashtag, which is yeah. pretty helpful as yeah, well. You should, you should no, go on if, if they're like, we don't know where it shows that. If you type in the hashtag, is that when it shows it? In, your, in line with your post on, yeah. on Instagram. I mean, again, I don't know the picture. Yeah, you just, okay, just click on it and you can see everything that's coming up and everything that's like killing it under that hashtag and take a look at those and do they resonate with you? Should I be doing more of that? Or is it completely wrong for you? And then stop using that hashtag. But Instagram will fault you if you do use the same hashtags over and over and over and over. They I will. Know. I use them over and over. They will penalize you. I uh, they do. Maybe you know? they do. So I've got like 10 On those sets. hashtags. On those specific hashtags. Yeah. I've got like 10 sets that I have saved in. So you rotate them, you say? A little. I'll ch so I'll change up because like who has time for all this, right? So. <laughs> I'll like do, you know, I do the text replacement. She dumps in 30 of them. I'll change maybe three. Boom. That's that something. Like that's something. Oh, that's something. You're changing it. That's something. <laughs> I have a question. Okay, go. Do you put them in the post or do you put them in the comments? Comment. Not in the comments. You do not put them in the comments? No, I don't. You put them in the post. Because no, those don't perform as well for me when I put Wait. them in the comments. So you're saying you put them in the comments. But you have to put them in right away. And you say you put them in the post. But I, yes, I put them in the post. Because you got to put them in right away. So you're putting it as the it. first comment yes. underneath? Has to go but right I separate in. it with a cute little heart or some yeah. kind of thing or something. You're like, so that we're not just like, hashtag. You know? I, yeah. I hate, when I see the explosion of hashtag, it seems so thirsty. But you do the little dot. It's like, like, oh my God, hashtag this, hashtag this. You can right? space it down to where it's not right after Yeah, and then, it, then your kids are like, why are you posting a heart emoji like right after? Hey, fake like, fan emoji. I don't <laughs> think you know what that means. <laughs> they're making fun of me. Don't like scare. I'm just gonna put the hashtags in my first one. I don't care. Okay, question: Are you also hiding tags within the post? If you're like showing brands, you're talking a kitchen, you're showing tiles or cabinet companies. How are you tagging them? Is it helping you to tag them? Top. I loud and proud it from the beginning, and I try to be very clear about. Like I work with GE Appliances a lot. I love them as a brand. Um, I want people to know that I work with them, and I only work with brands that I love. And so when I love a brand, I'm proud of it. It's easy for me to talk about. I say it right away. I'm so excited to show you what G Appliances is doing in my kitchen right now. I'm not going to hide that anywhere because it seems weird. I want people to know that I am, I am aligning my brand with this other brand. I don't want to be like shady about it at all. Um, and then I tag so that the brand can see. Because, like, of course. especially if they haven't paid me for it, you know? That's, I do that a lot. I, like, and I also post a lot where I tag brands that I love when I'm not being paid because that tells people that follow me that they can trust that I'm, I'm posting about brands that I love, that I'm not being paid. Because when you get paid, you have to put that paid partnership. And we all know when you see that paid partnership thing, a little bit of you is like, mm hmm okay i'm sure you love you know so we need the money so please look at that post please right and but please engage with that up. post because that's why i can make all these videos for free because somewhere along the line a brand is like oh i can pay you otherwise i can't spend all my time making free videos so <laughs> why would it be beneficial for a normal everyday person to do a cross tag to a brand if they're not going to get paid what would be their goal? Because they will, because some of the brands that I work with are because I tag them because I love them. 
And I kept tagging them because I love them. And we're not individuals hanging out as social. We're here trying to use this social media tool advertising platform for our business. And whatever your business is, there are partners that you can do. You don't have to have a huge brand. There are other brands that you can align with that have, they have 3,000 followers, you have 3,000 followers. You probably don't follow the same people. Boom, now you're both increasing to 6,000. That's, that's double the amount that you had before. So the, the gauge, just meet yourself where you are. And that's called micro-influencing. Mm -hmm. I know, right? Let's label right. it out. Yep. But here's the thing, it used to be that only people with a lot of followers would turn into, you know, income or whatnot and product. And now it's all about the little guy. You have to be a walking PR firm for your own company, right? Like you have to represent yourself. So if you're tagging whatever clients or whatever company that you're showing in that photo, they're going to show that possibly on their feed. That's going to get you more followers. That's going to get you more interest in your um, in your um, social media. So that is, it's all a big circle and it all comes back to you. So I think not over tag it. Don't like go crazy and put like, you know, every magazine that you want to be in. None of that stuff. But definitely, definitely the brands that are in the photo, yeah. wallpaper, appliances, tile, all those things. I but, and you have a post that lives through House Beautiful that's done well for you, right? But didn't they post one of your posts? You're talking about TikTok. Yeah. Let's go back to TikTok. And I'm, yes, I'm pulling up your images too of everything. Yeah, so my, you're pulling up my really awful TikToks. 2.8 yeah, million. Girl, that's so many views. Yes, I know. It's crazy, right? And I, yes. like I said, I've done like dozens of those, and you know, so many of them just like bombed. So, you know, what was special about that one? I've been over and over and over, and I have no idea. But um, I, I just want to say really quickly about tagging brands. Like, just tag them. Like, especially if if they're in the photo. I think I think most of you are doing that. Because you never know what that's going to get you, you know? You never know when the president of whatever company out there whose product you love is going to, you know, Should it be in out. the video? Should it be in the post? Should it be in the comments? Oh, it should be... I always put it... I'll always tag within the photo because that's what they're going to see. Then it comes up on their Instagram account under tags, right? Whereas if you tag in the comments, I do does it. I so, Yeah. And if it, well, if I'm really talking about the product that I'll put That's in me. the yeah. caption yeah. as well, but otherwise, maybe I'm just talking about something else related to design, but their faucet or whatever is in there, then I'll tag California faucets in the photo. So the thing that I think is so interesting when I try to think about why is this important, when this got 200 or 2.8 million views, how many followers did you have? Like, uh, just a, it could even be how many you have now. Maybe 5,000. Okay, so 5,000. Yeah. But this means that to, if there was a brand tagged in this, even if you don't say the brand, even if you're not like, oh, I love um, whatever, I love GU appliances. Even if, that's not GU appliances, but you know. Even if you don't say that, we have now seen that. I, I work with brands and I'll put, I don't say it, I'll just put the label in the, what I'm using, Diamond Nuts. You'll see the Diamond Nut in there. I don't say anything about it. But to the brand, that brand is now, that image has been seen by 2.8 million people. When when you look at shows on television, on Saturday morning on the Food Network, a good rated show for In the Kitchens was 0.8, which is 800,000 views, right? 800,000 viewers were watching it at that time. So when people were advertising, so the Food Network goes to advertisers and they say, okay, it's gonna get uh, 800,000 views, advertise with us, right? Now, you can go and say, it's going to get 2.4 million views, advertise with me. Advertise with, you don't have to advertise on networks anymore. You can advertise with people who are consistently getting those views and those numbers. And that's why it's important. And that's why it matters to brands. Because brands also don't know what's going on. And they also don't know how to create content. They just don't. That's We're true. all in a new world. Not, and they're all looking for content. They all have like somebody who's like, uh, just reposting stuff. I don't know. Do you guys look at your analytics? Like, do you study it, or are you like, yeah, it's gonna do well, or I it's not? I used to. I used to, but I don't anymore. I don't either. I don't anymore. It's too much stress. Um, yeah. You did your I homework. Do. I, know you I did. do. I do. I was an econ major in college. You sat in the front of the class. You <laughs> you're on it. Of course I did. 
Yeah, no, I think it's really fun to look at the analytics. I'm, I'm terrible. Like, I love to drill down and, and look at what hashtag is working this week. And, yeah. um, you know, I probably only get a marginal amount of, you know, yeah. help from that. But if you like it, do it. Mm -hmm. If you hate it, you know, maybe it's not your thing. But, you know, for me, I enjoy it. It's kind of like this hobby that, you know, when my husband's watching TV, I'm sort of drilling down into analytics and, and picking a new hashtag. So. Well, and on TikTok, to go back to that, there are viral songs that you can hide on the post, turn the sound down, and it'll help your post. It may not get the audience you want, but there, those are some of the tricks people do. Yeah. I had not heard about that trick. Oh, it's what the young folk are doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My son put me onto that one. Mm -hmm. And you do need to look at, yeah, when you get on TikTok, you need to look at what's gone viral in terms of music, and you have to pick your music that way. You're going to talk a little bit more about, like, the mechanics of this stuff tomorrow. At, yeah, go ahead and the tell them where the, they'll find you to get more in-depth. On the DMM stage tomorrow, I think, 9, something like that. <laughs> but I think it's the first thing on the stage tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Great. So if you want to hear more about TikTok, my thing is this, is TikTok's the Wild West. It's fun. And, like, the goal is on TikTok, you can just be yourself and who cares. So, like, on TikTok, I had one video that did really well. It instantly went to, like, just 30,000, not just. To me, that was a lot. And it was of my child. He wanted a haircut like JFK. He's a history kid. But then there were some kids that were mean about my son because he's special needs. Oh, no. And then I was like, I hate you, TikTok. I break up with you, TikTok. However, you have to have thick skin on TikTok. Like, part of it is knowing how to play the game. And, like, I'll go back on there, and I've got to teach my kid to have thick skin. And that is life and reality. But let's talk about, like, because you had mentioned it. We talked about on our call that TikTok's a tougher crowd. Yeah, it's a different crowd, and they could, they could be mean. They could be critical. Um, and you just have to, um, in, a, in a sense, it, it can be fun to lean into it. And, you know, Danvers and I were sort of comparing notes a little bit on how you lean into that. Um, or if you sort of intentionally, you know, you may slip a little something in there that, um, that you know is going to drive comments. And some of those comments might be negative, but it's driving a lot of comments, you know, so, and that's good and that's good for you. So I think what you might find, if you were to look at that TikTok of mine, it did really well. There's a couple of things in there that people were like, oh, that's not a good idea at all. And it's, it's back a few slides, but I'll go back to as you're talking. Let's talk about, you talked about you intentionally leave something out or misspell something. I do it all the time. So it's really important to have engagement. So if I'm posting a recipe all the time, I just won't post what temperature to bake the cake at, right? Because then everybody's like, oh, what temperature? You forgot to have the temperature. What temperature do you bake the cake at? It doesn't matter. Those are all comments. So now my post is doing really great. People are really engaging with it. I just go back and then after the next day, I'll be like, oh, edit. Thanks so much, 350. Or I comment to them, 350. Um, or I'll spell something wrong. So people want, everybody wants to correct you on everything. If you have a brand that's about luxury, probably this is not a good tip for you. <laughs> I am not a luxury <laughs> brand, okay? So it's fine for me. Um, I leave, I put a mistake in there. Because what that does is for the people who like to correct people, which they are out there, there are lots of them, and they take joy in correcting me. It doesn't matter because they just gave me another comment. So those are, those are like little sneaky techniques. It's also helped me because I allow myself to not be perfect. Uh, it allows me to post easier. I'm, I'm posting, I've taken away perfectionism out of posting. And so I can post more often. Um, I also try to, when people are mean, um, I let it hurt my feelings. I don't want to become a person where it doesn't hurt my feelings when somebody says something mean about me. I feel it. I don't give them energy back. I don't, I don't comment back when people say negative things. I give energy to people who are giving me good energy. But I do, as a real person, I don't want to adult myself. I don't want to be a person who people can say mean things about the way that I talk or the way that my face looks or the food that I make. I don't want to be somebody who that doesn't hurt. So it hurts my feelings. I let it hurt my feelings and then I move on. Um, do you make a leave Britney alone crying video? <laughs> I would. That would do very well.
But John, so you are about luxury. So when you translate that to social media, like how do you keep it real and lose luxury? Well, I mean, I think consistency in what I post is important, but to your point about getting feedback, I ask questions. And I don't just say like silly little things. I'm very specific, like when do you take your Christmas decorations down? Like how soon do you put this? I ask specific things. Um, one of the things that worked really well for me for engagement was when I actually was having people vote on choices for my own home. So I would say, what do you think? This wallpaper or that wallpaper? This tile or that tile? You knew you were going to ignore them, right? Well, they did the right answer, <laughs> thank God. But um, <laughs> uh, it was but it was good. The engagement was great. Mm -hmm. Everyone loved it. What are you going to post next? You know, what, do you, what can we vote on next? And they felt like they were a part of the, mm -hmm. of the project, you know. But I... As you see, my grid, my feed is very consistent as far as what I post. Um, mostly 99% professional images or professional video. That's really important. And every now and then I'll throw a photo in of my husband and myself or my dog and myself. My dog does really well. That's my cat. Dogs are really well. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And then you like to focus on tips, like it's teaching moments. Right, right. You know, I, I just feel like that's kind of my purpose. Um, and that's kind of what I want the focus to be. And it's, it's worked well. Um, and so I'm kind of sticking with that. I, I did do some, like like you were saying, sort of where you poll people on, you know, what do you think about this or this? And it did, it did get a lot of engagement. It was kind of fun. Um, but I also, I worry a little bit, and this is just me being quite paranoid, that I worry that people will think that I don't have an opinion and I, I can't decide or I can't design a, a kitchen on my own, so I need to ask everybody. Um, so I get a little paranoid about that, and, and I don't think as many of that. You could word it different. You could be like, hey, I, I, I'm curious what you're into kind of thing. Which do you like better? And I always just am like, I'm still going to do what I'm going to do, but I'm curious what which direction you would go. I always say there's no bad option. There's no bad choice. They're both great, which is what a line that we use when we present to clients as well. Like, here's two choices. They're both really good. It's just about what resonates with you. Mm -hmm. So that's what I tell my followers. It's like, they're both great, but I'm just curious about which one you guys And think. these are all happening usually in the store. Yeah, that's right. Story. That's the story. This is story, yeah. That's stories. So when I'm doing posts, when I want engagement in posts, we run a different kind of series. So we, I do, um, I do easy recipes. I do some recipes where people write in weird food combinations they want me to try, and I do a series where I post up things that I found at a thrift store that I don't know what they are. So one of those is for teaching, and it gets almost no, like the the recipes get almost no comments, but they get a ton of views. Right? They do very very well with views. Um, the weird food combos, they don't do that well with views, and the, this I found it at the thrift store, it does okay between both of them. What happens with the, I found it at the thrift store and the weird food combos, are that my engagement are crazy. So that the posts I'm doing are tailored towards keeping, knowing that this does really well with views, this does really well with engagement. And I make sure that my posts are a combination of those things. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, like you're giving, you know, you're keeping your engagement up. When you're still doing something that gets a lot of views, but my engagement's down. I don't want to stop doing cinnamon roll cake, which is a cake mix. And it's, I mean, I can't believe the things that people love, honestly. Half the time kills me. <laughs> like, but the people, what you start to do is you learn. You start to learn about your community. You start to fill the need of your community, which is what we're all trying to do, which is what all brands are trying to do. That's what the entire thing is about. Yeah, 100%. And we're going to get to questions here in a second. And I think one of the best things to like just remind people is it's kind of evolved to community over competition. It used to be that in this industry, it was like, I'm the best. No, I'm the best. And it was very like... Um, Nancy Kerrigan, Tanya Harding kind of competition, They're but normal. now it's like high five each other, I celebrate you, it's not my aesthetic, but I high five you out the wazoo. So I want to, before we get to questions, give a fast, what is your prediction for social media, no pressure? Like, what do you think is going to happen next? What's going to be big? It can be for you, it can be for people, for the design industry. Like, is it focusing more on user-friendly? Is it wellness? What is it? 
oh gosh, wellness is off the charts, right? Um, as, as we all know. Yeah, I think it's, it's thinking about, you know, how these trends, you know, for you as a designer, how do these trends kind of translate into content that's relevant to your brand? So, you know, if, if, if I were sort of starting out, and, and you should be doing this over and over, right? But you should think about the trends, kind of break them down in your head, um, and then figure out, so how can I translate this into a series um, that's meaningful to my brand, like you, know, like you were describing? Maybe it's something new. Take a look on TikTok and Reels. Maybe there's a series, somebody else is doing something already that works perfectly for you. Social media is all about copying others. You know, jump on that bandwagon. Um, so, but yeah, I think everything just quickly transitioning to video, which makes me sad. I, I love the photos on Instagram. And it makes me really sad that when I go through my feed now, it's like 80% video. But it's beautiful and stunning. Okay, your <laughs> prediction. Uh, my prediction is that you're going to continue to see positivity. I think we had a couple of dark years. Like it's been a hard couple of years for everybody. And social got rough. Um, and so I think that you're going to see a lot of transitioning back to positivity and like mental health, like talking about like how do we make sure that we are engaging with social in a healthy way and that we're engaging with our communities in a healthy way. I also think that you're still going to see dancing, 100%. Like you're still going to see dancing because it makes people feel joy. Um, and I think you're going to find that social TikTok and Instagram are going to find ways to um, monetize content. Very quickly, I think they're going to start rolling that out because people are realizing like, wait, I'm just giving them this, I'm building this brand where I'm creating content for free, that Instagram and TikTok, I think they're going to find ways to start paying creators, not through brand partnerships, but through just the apps themselves. Hopefully. Who knows? <laughs> so, I, I think there's going to be this separation of business minded, business minds from your personal um, life. I really do. I think that we're all going to open up and we're going to show ourselves for who we are. I think that that's what this pandemic has taught us is that the things that really matter in life and those things have really come to the surface, especially for me over the past two years. So I'm, I'm frankly done with the status quo and trying to do this and worrying about likes. I just am going to put myself out there and I think that more and more people are going to be vulnerable and going to be more open about who they are and I think brands are also going to have to figure out a way to show their vulnerability rather than just trying to force a product down someone's throat. So it's about being who you are true to yourself and those brands have to have to delicately find that as well. Mm -hmm. Transparency out the yeah. wazoo. We're going to start taking questions and it's always awkward at first. It's going <laughs> to...